A recursive function is one that calls itself. This is a powerful technique for solving problems in terms of easier problems. A recursive function has one or more base cases, which the book calls edge conditions, and one or more recursive cases. The base cases are easy problems that can be solved directly. The recursive cases are problems that can be solved given the solutions to slightly easier problems. There are many simple useful functions to be written for lists. For good or ill, most of these are already built into Haskell. We can redefine them ourselves by using slightly different names with apostrophes. Let's look at several examples taken from chapters 4 and 5 in the book. Here is the base case for length. If the list is empty, the length is 0. Here's the recursive case. The length of a non-empty list is 1 plus the length of the tail of the list. Finding the length of the tail is an easier problem because it's closer to the base case. This simple pattern is common for lists. The base case is the empty list. The recursive case involves the function calling itself on the tail of the list. Here's a slightly more complicated one. Maximum. In the recursive case, we have to find the maximum of the tail of the list, then compare that to the first item. I'm going to start running a command shell inside Emacs. This way we won't have to do so much panning around between windows. Maximum usually works. If we ask for the maximum of an empty list, though, we get an error message. The message says that there is no pattern matching this case. An error is probably the right behavior here because it doesn't make sense to ask for the maximum of an empty list. We could make the message a little more friendly. We now have enough tools to take on a larger challenge, the game of tic-tac-toe, also known as knots and crosses. Before we look at this system in detail, I should point out that developing this program took quite a bit of trial and error on my part. Don't worry when your functions don't work the first time. That's too much to hope for, even for an expert. A mistake isn't a failure, it's a learning opportunity, and evidence that you had the courage to try something you didn't already know how to do. We need a way to represent the tic-tac-toe board. We'll use a list of strings, where each string represents a board. Each character is a dot, an X, or an O. The empty board looks like this. By the way, anything on a line after a double dash is a comment in Haskell. The winner function tells us who, if anyone, has won the game. For example, here's a board where X has a row across the top. The definition of the winner function makes excellent use of pattern matching and guards. We have a variable for each square on the board. Each guard line checks for one of the eight rows that might be a win. For example, the first one says that if A, B, and C are all the same, but not all dots, A is the mark of the winning player. If we get down to the last two guards, nobody has won. If there's still a dot on the board, the game is not over. If there isn't, the game is a tie. We need a way to play moves on the board. This is a good place to practice our recursion. We'll start by replacing one element of a list. Here's how this works.
Remember that a Haskell function can't modify its argument. Instead, it returns a new list. The base case is replacing the zeroth item. We simply cons the replacement onto the tail of the list. In the recursive case, we cons the head of the list onto the result of replacing the i minus oneth element of the tail. Now that we have replace, we can write a method that lets us play at a particular row and column. Here's how it works. This function is a one-liner, not counting the type signature. It's easiest to understand from the inside out. This is the rth row of the board. This replaces the seeth character in that row with a. This replaces the rth row of the board with the improved version. While the interface is not pretty, two people could now play against each other using our functions. Doing this on a $500 computer is clearly superior to using a piece of paper or a chalkboard. Let's throw in an artificially intelligent opponent. The first thing we need is a function that determines the value of a board. If the game is over, the value is 1 if x1, minus 1 if o1, and 0 if the game was a tie. In any other case, the value depends on whose turn it is. If it's x's turn, the value is the maximum value among the possible successor boards. If it's o's, it's the minimum. This technique is called minimax tree search. The base cases are where the game is over. The recursive cases use list comprehensions. Here we consider each possible value of r and c as long as that square on the board is still empty. For each such possibility, we take the value for the other player of the board where we have played at row r, column c. This function can tell when winning is possible. We want to know one more thing, to know which move is best, not just how good it is. Given a list of boards, we can find the best one for x using best of. This is structured much like maximum. To find the best move, then, we just consider all the places where x might play and take the best one. Now we can play against our program. It can take a while, about 20 seconds on my machine, to make its first move. We can take advantage of the special value it. This is always the last thing we evaluated. If you remember your childhood tic-tac-toe skills, you'll be able to hold the program to a tie, but you'll never beat it.